Ahoy hoy! So you want to be a pirate, eh? Well, you have come to the proper place. Renaissance Fair season is starting soon, and I thought it'd be a good time to talk about pirate costuming. I'd say I'd have pretty good credentials for this. I've been dressing like a pirate since I was a kid, but I've been doing pirate costuming as a serious hobby for over a decade. Maybe you want to put together a authentic pirate outfit for the Ren Fair or a good pirate cosplay for the next convention. And you may not know where to start. Well, I hope you choose me as the one to help you find the style you want and to get a good kit started. People imagine a lot of different things when they think about pirates, as there are many different types of pirates, like Hollywood or stereotypical pirate, which is usually what most people think of. There's early 20th century silent film pirates or vintage pinup pirates. The history buffs will think of the real life historical pirate. Many types of pirates, as well as the many branches under the costuming umbrella, lead into the different categories of pirate costuming. I made a video on TikTok a couple years ago on the different styles of pirate costuming and the proper terminology, so let me from two years ago speak for myself. I feel like that one of the first things to think about when you're about to put together your pirate outfit is what style of pirate you want to be, or at least to kind of know what's out there as well as the proper terminology. Other pirates in the pirate community have made similar lists of styles of pirate costuming, but I had made my own as well. Perhaps eventually I did add a little bit of uh, the other people's inputs into my own, just to kind of broaden it a bit. First of all, we're gonna talk about the proper terminology for pirate costuming. I would say that the most easiest thing to really remember is that costumes be a one-time thing. Garb is the real deal. Of course, you got costumes, you know, like for like Halloween costumes and stuff, or even thrift store costumes. There's cosplay. The outfits are called cosplays. You're essentially dressing up to represent a already existing fictional character, you know, like Jack Sparrow or Captain Hook. When you're going to the Ren Fair or a festival, your outfits are typically called garb. And the people that are in the community that regularly go to Ren Fair are called Rennies. And of course, there are reenactors or you know, living history people that will call their stuff either garb or kits. Kit is just another term for outfit. They'll sometimes also do like fairs and festivals, but they also do encampments and excursions and stuff. You know, anything like living history related. Now here are the actual costumes themselves. I'm gonna try my best to use my own examples. However, some of them I may have to pull off of the internet. First, we got like, you know, like the Halloween costume. They're like cheaply made like with like polyester. A bit stereotypical and costumey looking. You can buy them usually like from costume stores or Halloween stores. There's also a subcategory kind of where it's like thrift store pirate. But you know, they're just costumes crafted off of thrift store clothes. Cosplay is just costumes of already existing fictional characters. The outfits are typically in this Hollywood style pirate. You know, the pieces are just like a mix of time periods. You got like beads, dreadlocks, bucket boots. The Jack Sparrow impersonators and lookalikes are gonna literally be in their own category. The Renfair style of pirate will usually consist of like big hats, long coats, big boots, loads of belts and accessories. For the wenches, you got the corsets with the boobs spilling halfway out. Loads and loads of skirts. Some of these outfits are like in this very fancy, like Ren Faire style. And some of them have like that super realistic pirate look to them. A lot of Ren Faire pirates will also have uh, a lot of iconic Ren Faire accessories. Like tankards for drinking, furry tails, and my favorite, the pins. Bone pins, pewter pins, wood pins. And people will like literally cover entire garments in pins. One of the other lists have had added uh, parade pirates as well. The folks that are in Gasparilla and Mardi Gras, they wear like super flashy pirate clothes and skull and bones hats, loads of beads, and they're throwing beads out to everybody. Lastly, we got the historically accurate pirate. The way that pirates really looked, which are looks that most people may not recognize. 
Most people, when they envision a pirate, they'll envision something like Jack Sparrow, or like long frock coats, uh, tricorn feathered hats, and boots. A historically accurate pirate will look a little more something like this. That, like I said, is one in something more like living history or reenacting. Also, you don't have to stick with like one specific look. You could throw in inspirations from any of them into your into your outfit, into your garb. For me, for example, the baseline of the outfit is just like realistic female pirate, more like masculine looking. Somewhat inspired by the story of Mary Reed. I also have Ren Faire inspired accessories. Some Jack Sparrow inspired accessories and makeup. I kind of just do my own thing, but I still have it rather consistent. You can literally do anything, like just have at it. I don't have much to add to that, though the only thing that has changed is I finally got at least a little bit of gilding and reenactment experience. So I could speak a little more on that, but not right now. Now that we've gone over the different types of pirate costuming, we're going to go over the different ways to build your costume, garb, or kit. The first way to build your garb is to source your pieces, in other terms, buying or assembling your outfits. This is something essentially more beginning costumers do, or people like me who just suck at crafting. It's best to explore what's out there and collect parts of your garb. I actually found it best cost-wise to collect different garments over the years instead of spending hundreds of dollars at once on a kit. And it's okay to start small too. Just know, if you buy a bagged costume, then it's a Halloween costume from Party City. And if you buy pieces online, especially from something like Amazon, pay attention to what you're buying. Look at the reviews and customer images. Make sure it's going to be something of quality. Some good things have come out of Amazon and eBay though. Etsy is really good as well. It's a little more on the pricier side, but you are supporting artists and small businesses. There are also many different websites that exclusively make and sell pirate or Renfair garb and historical clothing. I'll put up a list on screen of the many of these websites I have found. I highlighted the ones I bought from. You can also find pieces for your garb in person as well. Costume shops are good places to find garments. No. I'm not talking about the once a year pop-up Halloween stores. I'm talking the year-round costume shops that'll likely have theater or Ren fair quality costumes and garb. They're not around everywhere though, so you'll have to look it up and see if there's one in your area. Thrifting is also a great way to assemble your garb, especially on the cheap. It's a good start for many beginners and also a great start for younger people as well. It's also a good way to get creative if you don't know how to make a whole garment yourself. I've taken a button-down shirt that I thrifted, cut off the sleeves, collar, and the bottom of the shirt, seam ripped the front pocket off, and sewed the edges, and huzzah! I made a little waistcoat. You can find belts, vests, blousy pirate shirts, and more from thrifting. One time I found a legit pair of pirate boots at a thrift store, and I had to leave them behind because they weren't my size. One last place to find garb in person is to just go to a renaissance fair or a pirate festival. They have dozens to hundreds of artisans selling garb and accessories. Like Etsy, it's a little more on the pricier side, but again, you are supporting artists and small businesses. Just remember that even though it looks easy, sourcing is just as much of a skill as sewing, leather work, metal smithing, and more. It takes a lot of practice. Trust me, I know. It took a whole decade or more for me to even get good enough at it to do it on my own. It's hard finding good garments if you don't know people or what to search for or where to look it up. The other way to build your kit is to, well, make it yourself. I'm actually not very good at crafting and the most I can sell is basic repairs. So I don't really have much to offer here on like sourcing. As you can see, my whole garb is sourced and modified. If you are beginning to sew though, Doing something simple like a pirate shirt or a waistcoat is the easiest way to start. Crafting is a good route to go to if you don't have over 150 bucks to spend on a garment and you don't have luck thrifting. And that's if you already have the supplies, that is. There are plenty of tutorials online if you are looking for somewhere to start when it comes to sewing and such. 
I've seen people hand make their entire garb, including their hats, leathers, and even weapons. In this day and age, there is a lot more resources for fair and historical clothing. When I was younger, it was not so much. I hope that this here is a good start for you. For more of a realistic or lived-in look to your garb, you will want to weather it. For fabrics, you can tea dye or coffee dye them. And what I like to do is spray them with aerosol fabric spray paint to make it look more dirty and 3D looking. I use a few different colors of spray paint, brown, gray, black. What I love about fabric spray paint is that it doesn't dry hard at all and it's permanent. I use sandpaper on parts of my clothing to make it more softer and worn down. I'll do this like on the knees and such. And I use wire brushes to tear the edges. I like using both to make my sashes ragged and holy. You will want to be careful doing this to lighter weight fabric though, especially if you're going to be wearing it a lot like I do. Also, people like to drag their garments on the road or run them over. I prefer not to do that as I like to have control when I'm weathering my garb. And I don't want to F it up and ruin it. For my belt, I use shoe polish on it. It's been years since I've done this, to be honest. But I'm sure I use different colors on it, like black and brown. It gives it a worn and waterlogged look. And like the fabric paint on my clothes, the shoe polish makes my belt look more 3D. Rubbing some sandpaper on the edges also adds a little more to the look. When I store my belt, I roll it up tight and store it in a secure spot so it doesn't unroll. I'll also switch sides. Most of the time I'll roll it with the outside facing out and sometimes I roll it with the inside facing out. I do this to soften the leather. I especially started doing this when my belt was new. Using mink oil or any other kind of like leather oil softens up the belt as well and it protects the leather from outside forces. For my belt buckle, I pretty much just use rub and buff. It magically turns the buckle from shiny, new, and costumey to something more aged and antiqued. The best way to weather your garb is to wear it. If you don't go to a lot of events, wear it out. Take it to the beach, wear it at home, wear it to bed. Lay out in the sun so it's sun bleached. Live in it so it looks lived in. I know this is not for everyone, but for me, I'm not totally afraid to get dirty when playing pirate. I've been in dirt, sand, mud, rain, oceans, rivers, creeks, lakes. I've slept in it. Especially when camping at fair. I have unfortunately puked on it before. That was fun. My garb is not disgusting. I swear. I wash it. But most of the weathering on my garb is actually natural. Like only 30% of the weathering here is artificial. Yes, parts of it are falling apart. And I constantly have to mend it. And I'm gonna have to retire some pieces and upgrade eventually. But that's how people tell me, damn. Looks like you walked off a movie set. One of the biggest things to stay away from if you want good pirate garb is polyester. Polyester is a more modern material and it's synthetic. It's something that Halloween costumes and even some cosplay costumes are made out of. Polyester can also get very hot, itchy, and uncomfortable to wear, especially if you're going to an outdoor event like a Ren Fair. Staking with more natural materials like cotton, linen, and wool is more authentic and period correct, and it's a lot more comfortable to wear. This one is more personal for me, but when choosing a color for pirate shirts, I prefer natural rather than white. It looks less new to me, and it skips the tea dyeing part. But you can get a white shirt and still work at it to look weathered. Some people also like the fancier or neater look, so it doesn't matter as much to them. And I mean, like, the fancy shirt I have is white, so... This is just my aesthetic, though. If you want to go for more of a historical route and research what pirates really wore back in the day, the best way to look it up is to search for what did sailors wear in the 16th and 1700s, rather than what did pirates wear. Because pirates... We're essentially sailors, and that's what real-life pirates dress like. If you just put in what did pirates dress like, what did pirates wear, then you're going to get something a little more, like, fantastical, like, stereotypical, or some Hollywood stuff or something like that. Or something that is said to be the truth, but it's not totally based on it. So searching up specifically more, like, sailor fashion 
would give you a little bit better results if you're looking for absolute historical authenticity. First, we got my hat. This hat is very special to me because I got it at my very first pirate festival when I was 14. Unfortunately, I don't really recall what vendor I got it from and the pirate festival never returned from the lockdown. I also have this hat I got from the Ren Fair. I wear it with more of a fancier outfit. Then we got the shirt. The shirt is what I naturally wear for my garb. It has obviously been very weathered both artificially and naturally and it has been mended a lot. It's made from vagabond imports, which seemed to shut down when the lockdown started, so the shirts aren't made anymore and are harder to find. This laced shirt is also made from vagabond. This here is the roughly shirt that you see on all of the Pirate Core aesthetic boards. It's made by FW Creations for All on Etsy. As someone who usually goes with more of a rugged look, I definitely love going for something fancy once in a while. Three of my waistcoats are from Pirate Fashions. I had to weather them a bit, but they're nice and simple. I like the corsetting in the back too. I also have this furry one. I was given this at a fair, so I'm not entirely sure who made it, but I wanted to show that off. This vest is made by the Alter Egos Bazaar. This is not part of my normal garb, but I like this as an alternative Ren Faire outfit for an extra day. I also wear this a lot during the holidays as it screams Thanksgiving and Christmas to me. I just also wanted to show this off. This is my Young Jack Sparrow waistcoat. It's from DressLikeAPirate.com. I've had it for several years, so it is definitely lighter than it was when I got it. It also got hemmed. Very crappily done, I should say. I have this short jacket from Townsend. And then I also have this coat I got from the year-round costume shop in my city. I also have a few cloaks I got from fairs. I don't wear outerwear a lot, as most of my fairs are too hot to wear them at. I actually wear them more on cold nights. My black necktie is from Townsend. I was initially inspired to add this by the portraits of 1700 sailors. My checked neckties are from Quartermaster General. I love them as they fit perfectly with my two main kits. I got my sashes and bandanas from the Pirate Dressing, which their shop is on Amazon. I've also seen a few of the bandanas and sashes at one of the year-round costume shops. I like them because they're pretty light and easy to wrap. They aren't super thick and super hot to wear and the sashes are pretty easy to weather. This is something more Ren Fair style, and I wear this more casually, but I wanted to show something more feminine in this video. I don't remember what website I got it from. I'll put the name of it on the screen. My belt is from Pirate Fashions. This is definitely an original from my young Jack Sparrow days. It looks really good after being weathered. I also got this cool decorative macrame belt from thrifting. All the accessories on my belt are from different fairs. The frogs are from Ren Fairs to explain. Frogs are used to carry stuff on the belt. I have two tails. One of them is from an anime convention across the country, and the other is from a Ren Fair. The keys are also from a Ren Fair. And the rope is from like a Dollar Tree, Michaels or something, I don't remember. My two pouches are from Ravenswood Leather. They hold my most valuable possessions. My tankard is from Townsend. I also got my flask and flask holder, which I got from a run fair. Those are a little more important for fair rather than with my garb. I have a few different knives. I usually get them at fair. I have a small collection of pirate flintlocks. Most of them are Denix replicas. This one here is actually real. It's not fireable as it wasn't supposed to be sold to fire, but when I drill a hole in the barrel, it would be fireable. From what I remember, it's actually more of like an 1800s model, but it's really cool telling people it's real. I also have a baldric that's made by Ravenswood Leather and the sword that goes in it. I actually have a collection of swords, although I don't carry them often as they get in the way at events. Most of them are toys or props though. I have this discontinued Jack Sparrow sword that is con safe, and I wore this with my cosplay. My black breeches and my slaps are from Pirate Fashions. My brown breeches are from Amazon. My socks and garters are from Townsend. 
The shoes are actually thrifted and modified, and my rope sandals are from Pirate Fashions. I also got these boots from my Jack Sparrow cosplay. These are from Kaboots. My beach trance are from Renfair. I don't remember the name, but they were from the same vendor at the NorCal Ren Fair and Pirate Festival and the Pleasure Fair. My ear cuff, that's also from a fair, and my hair feathers are from an anime convention. The rest of my accessories, I'm not even wearing them, the rest of my accessories are gifted. We are now at the end of the video. I hope that you all get some inspiration through this video and enjoy hearing about the story of my garb. Just remember, everyone starts somewhere, and there is more than one way to pirate. Ta now.